En nu zijn we begonnen met de Hebreeuwse les. Is het mooi of is het niet mooi? Heel mooi. Hi Ankie, leuk dat je er bent. We hebben net nog een oefenopgave gedaan van Nederlandse grammatica. Over te kunnen onderscheiden welke voornaamwoorden er in de zin zijn. Of ze zelfstandig of dat ze bijvoeglijk worden gebruikt. En als het een betrekkelijk voornaamwoord is, waar verwijst het dan naar? Wat is het antecedent? En nu gaan we naar hoofdstuk 8. Oh, hier, hier, daar was hij dus. Ik heb al die tijd naar dat ding lopen zoeken. Hij lag op mijn boek Hebreeuws. En, kijk eens, ik heb een nieuw boek, jongens. Okay. Mystery, marvels, miracles. Het is een echte dikke jongen. Zie je dat? Echt een kerstvakantie, jongen. Ja, het is een kerstvakantieboek. En ik zal even voorlezen wat, de, wat de, de wonderen in het leven van de heilige. Levitatie. De geur van de heiligheid. Mystieke harten. Wonderbaarlijke transportaties. Uh, licht en stralen van liefde. Vuur en rieten van liefde, onzichtbaarheid, de gaven van tongen, mystieke vastes, mystieke kennis. Dat is tijdens het leven. En dan hebben ze ook nog een hele afdeling met dingen die gebeurd zijn nadat de mensen overleden zijn. Wat gebeurt er met hun lichamen en noem maar op. Dus, uh, ik ben benieuwd. Allemaal van dat soort verhalen van waar Justin Abram ook over uh, ja. schrijft. Hè? Dat is leuk. Ja. Goed. Deze gaan we nu doen. Oké. Okay. Hoofdstuk 8. Nee, toch? Ja. ja. Ja, want we hebben de laatste les ging over hoe vertaal je het voegwoord. Hebben we gedaan. Oh ja, 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 ja. Ja, ja dat is waar. Ja? Ja. Met uh, Genesis 1, vers 2. De duisternis oh, ja, ja. leefde over het, over het water, maar de geest van God zweefde over. Oké. Okay. Nee, nu, ga, nu gaan we over zelfstandig naamwoorden en uh, les hoofdstuk 8. Volgens mij hadden we die al eerder gedaan, een stukje. Ja. ja. 8.1 en 8.2. Die ja. hadden we nog gedaan. Deze moet ik even iets groter maken. En dit is 8.1. Ik moet hem voor mezelf, want het wordt altijd van die kleine schermpjes als ik ze open. Oké. Okay. En nu ga ik naar share screen, nummer 1. En dan... Ik hoor wel allemaal bijgeluiden, Ronald. Ja, dat, dat is de herrie op de achtergrond. Maar oh, die ga ik zo... Okay. Die ga ik zo, ik okay. ga zo muten. Ik pak zo mijn rol tape en dan is het afgelopen. Oké, okay. als het goed is, kunnen jullie dit horen. Vowel reduction in nouns. Horen jullie dat? Ja. Ja. Mooi. Nee. In this module and the next two, we're going to look at what happens to vowels in nouns when you add the plural ending. In this particular module, we'll look at just regular nouns. In the next, we'll look at a special type of noun called a segulate noun. And in the third module, we'll look at what happens with monosyllabic nouns. So, let's look at our friend Seuss the horse. This was our paradigm word. So if you remember, Seuss, that's the masculine singular form, right? That's the base form. And then Susa. Susa was the feminine singular. If you add the endings, we won't worry about the dual. We're just talking about plural endings here. Su sim. Get a cute and a main. And su sot. Su. Su sot. You notice that the base form, sus, stays the same through the whole thing in this particular case. There's no changes to the u. The u sound stays the same. You just add the ending. That's the simplest. And for many nouns, this is the case. However, for some nouns, you have your, your noun, you add the ending, either the feminine or the, 
or the, the masculine, masculine or feminine. And because you're adding ending here, the stress will shift to the end, typically, and you'll get reduction here. The vowel will reduce. And that makes some sense. You add to one end, you've got to take away from the other in order to balance things out. And you can get reduction in one of two places. You can get it here, or you can get it here. Het is echt een typisch Hebreeuwse gedachte. Als je ergens iets aan toevoegt, moet je het aan de andere kant wegnemen. Want balancing is blijkbaar heel belangrijk. Het brengen van balans is blijkbaar een, een, een grondprincipe, niet alleen in de taal, maar ook in het leven. Dat vind ik nog wel apart. Now let's review our, our uh, syllables. We had three types of syllables, you remember? We had the tone syllable. That is the one where the stress is. So if you add the ending, the stress will usually go there, and that'll be the tone syllable. Then we have the pretonic, and then we have propretonic. And it'll first try to reduce in the propretonic, the furthest away, the opposite side. Adds here, reduces there. If it can't, then it will try to reduce here. Now I'm speaking anthropomorphically here, try to, but you know what I mean. This is what we observe happening. Now in this position, the propretonic, the comets, and the tzede, if there are either a comets or tzede there, they will reduce to shava. Okay, it looks like a semicolon, to a shava. In this position, only the tzede will reduce to a shava, to a shava, and not quite as predictably, but this, this is this is second choice. So it'll only happen if this can't happen. Okay, let's uh, diagram this and look at some examples. Um, maybe I should write out our diagram this a little bit better. Tonic. So that's our tonic syllable. Then we have pretonic. This is the one that pretonic is immediately before the tonic, and then two two syllables from the tonic is the propretonic. If I can fit that in here. Pro. Pre. Well, that ain't going to fit. We'll just put a T for tonic there. Okay. And what I just said in the previous slide was that comets and etsede will reduce here. That's number one choice. If you can't do that, if you can't have pre propitonic reduction, then a tzere, and only a tzere, not a comets, in the pretonic may reduce. Let's look at navi. Navi is prophet. Na vi, this is the singular. Okay. Masculine singular form. What happens if you add im? You get Propitonic reduction, because you got a comet in the propitonic position. So it'll reduce. It reduces to a shava. Na. Close my bait. Na, v. Sorry. N, v. And then we add the ending, im. So that's an example of propitonic reduction, because we have a comet in the propitonic position. We're adding an ending. Similarly, Lev, we'll look at Lev, or Levav, in the singular form. This is a feminine word. It means heart. Levav. Now this is a word that has a tzede in the propretonic reduction, in the propretonic syllable, Levav. Once you add the im, it becomes propretonic. So it will also reduce. Le. Let me rewrite that. Le, va, vote. Le va vote. So here we have an example of propertonic reduction of a 
comet, and here we have one of propitonic reduction of a tzede. Here we have a masculine ending, plural ending, here we have a feminine plural ending. So that's what we talk that's what we mean when we talk about propitonic reduction. Now, what happens here? This is a test. But not a hard test. Okay, if we have Chacham, wise man, masculine singular, wise man. If we add im on there, what happens? Yeah. What's the bullet? Ik kan er niet een zwaar van maken. Dat kan niet met die letter, toch? Dat kan toch niet met die letter, met de geet. Dus wat gebeurt er dan? Ja, dat weet ik niet meer wat er toen wat er dan gebeurde. Korter wordt die, wordt een, uh, een, uh, een streepje, geen, geen, dit is een kamets wordt het dan. Is, klopt dat? Dat is juist wat we moeten uitvinden. Ik moet, we moeten kijken van, het kan geen chihuahua worden, omdat je onder een, een gutterol uh, geen chihuahua kan krijgen. Dus wat een kamet? Wat, ja, weet je nog met, die, uh, met dat hele grote schema? Ja. Nou, we gaan het zien. Oh, oh, oh. De O, oh, wordt het niet een O? Wordt het niet een O? Ja. Wordt het niet een, dat? Een O? Een uh, van Gokma? De O? Een Gokma? De Kamet Hatouf? Kamet Hatouf. Nou, we gaan het zien. Die staat er al toch? Nee, er staat hier nee, een Nee, het is gewoon een kam, kamer. Uh, wacht even, ik zal nog even laten zien, ogenblikje. Ik zal even laten zien. Hoe weet je nou of dit een A-klank is of een O-klank? Als het CVC is, is het een O-klank. Want dit is? Een vowel. Een kort. Ja, kort, ja. In het Engels, unstressed. Ja. Ja, dus unstressed, CVC, kort. En van je, je chart, hier heb je de A, de E, de I, de O. Hier heb je de lange. En dan had je de... Deze stond volgens mij hier en hier. En voor mijn neus. Of, ja. of alleen, alleen hier. En hierboven, deze moet even weg. En daar stond die ook. Zat die daar ook? Ja. En hier had je de golm en de golm vast. Ja. Ja. Ja? Dus ja. dit is lang, middel en kort. Oké. Okay. Nou, dan gaan we kijken of het verhaal klopt. Even alles uitvegen weer, want anders hebben we daar last van. Dus je kan zien of het tape-symbool in een woord, of dat een A- of een O-klank is, door de syllable, reduction, of, uh, syllable division doen. Gagam. Dit is een CVC en dit is CV. Unstressed, dus dit is lang, dus is het een A-klank. Dat is het idee wat er uh, aan vast zit. Het is eigenlijk allemaal heel erg logisch. Ja, op de uitzonderingen na. <laughs> Dan is het ineens niet meer logisch. Dan is het van, ah, Goed, we gaan luisteren. Let's do this part. Let's do this. Let's just do our consonants for a moment. We'll put the ending on. Im. So wise men. Now, do we get propitonic reduction? Can we? Well, we have a comet in the propitonic position, right here. The question is, what is it going to reduce to? Here we saw it reduced to a shiva. That's the default thing. However, with a guttural, gutturals can't take shiva, simple shiva, so they will take a compound shiva. So, you'll get that. 
Hatav Patach. So, Chachamim. So one small note, just note that if, if, if you have a guttural, it's not going to go to simple Shavah, it's going to go to a compound Shavah. Okay. <laughs> No. Thing here. If we can't reduce in the propitonic, then the uh, now do we get propitonic reduction? Uh, so they will take a compound shiva. So you'll get that. Hataf patach. So hachamim. So one small note. Just note that. If, if, if you have a guttural, it's not going to go to simple Shavah, it's going to go to a compound Shavah. Okay. Let's go back to our thing here. If we can't reduce in the propitonic, then the next option is to reduce in the pretonic. And let's look at some examples of that. Oh, we need one more over. So if we have show fate means judge, or one who judges. Shofet, if we add an im to that, let's, um, okay, if we add im on there, can we have propitonic reduction? Even a leuk tussendoortje. Even my pen erbij pak, hoor. Show fate staat er, hè? Dus het is show met een F. Show fate. Dan heb je een shin. Shin betekent vuur. Ja. Dan heb je een vaf. Dat is de mens. Dan heb je een pe. Dat is de mond. En dan heb je een tet. En wat is dat? Baarmoeder. Ja, dan was het nog meer. Er was nog iets meer. Ja, wat was die andere? Uh, help, wie weet het nog? De set. De slang. Hè? De slang. Oh ja, de slang. Dus je zou kunnen zeggen, het vuur uit de mens spreekt over de slang. Zoiets. Ja. Dus dat doet een rechter. Dit doet een rechter. En het is interessant dat op de rechtertroon in Daniel 7 vuur voor zijn troon is. En er staat in Psalm 98 of zo, vuur gaat voor zijn aangezicht uit en verteert zijn sterkste vijanden. Dus een rechter is altijd drager van vuur. En het geeft blijkbaar een oordeel over de slang. Leuk, hè? <laughs> ik vind dat soort dingen altijd nog erg interessant. Ook, even, ook al zijn we puur Hebreeuws aan het leren, dit vind ik dan toch weer even, van, even tussendoor. Ik weet niet of jullie dat leuk vinden, anders moet je zeggen, stop er maar mee. Nee, ik vind het wel leuk, hè? Ja. Ja, ik heb het opgeschreven. Ja. Goed. Chauffeet. Well, we can't, because propitonic reduction is only going to happen with a comet or a tzere in this position. Here we have a whole and vav. In addition, meters, historically long vowels, in other words, vowels that are marked with a meter, do not reduce. You can't reduce those. So we've got two reasons here, doubly certain that this is not going to reduce. So show, but now we look at the pretonic position, the next syllable along, and it has a tzere, and a tzere does reduce in the pre-protonic, in the pretonic position. So, shofa team. Shofa team. So, if we can't reduce in the furthest one, the propitonic, then we can look at reduction in the pretonic if it has a tzere. Let's look at, actually, a very similar word. I'll put the name here just to emphasize. This is the noun. This is actually a participle. We'll talk about participles later. They're kind of verb noun combinations, but um, let's look at this word, mishpat. 
Ugh. Squiggly squigglies. Mish. Make sure I spell this right. Mish. So Dagesh Lene, because this is a silent Shiva. Mish Pot. This means judgment. And this is this is judges. Uh, the basic verb form here is would be shafat, uh, which means to judge. So you can see how this is related. Judgments coming from that. This is the noun form, and often you can take a verb form and add a maim on it. A maim or a tav onto a verb form will will produce a corresponding noun often. So that that helps in reading Hebrew. You learn one form, the sheen, the pe, and the tav or the Tate here, and then you can see at least the basic sense in a number of different words. Anyway, that's just free, free information. Mishpat, that's the masculine singular. What happens if we add im to it? Okay, let's start to write this. First syllable, mish. Can we, do we have pr propretonic reduction? Do we have a comet or a tzede here? No, we don't. So, no propitonic reduction. Let's write the next one. So we have, we'll put both consonants down, the syllable. Now we have a comment here. So we're going to try now uh, pretonic reduction. Propitonic didn't work. What about pretonic? Well, mm -hmm. that's not going to work either because only the tzede will reduce in the pretonic position. Okay. Here in the propretonic, either of these will reduce, comments with tzede, but in the pretonic, it's only tzede. So, no luck. Can't reduce here, can't reduce here. So then we add our ending, we just add it straight on. Uh, this is the word division here. So, mishpatim. Mishpat becomes mishpatim. Can't reduce anything. Now, what else do I want to say here? This is fairly predictable. This is less predictable, the pretonic, uh, pretonic reduction, but we will see it in verb paradigms. Once we get to verbs, we'll look at some, some uh, patterns for verbs, and there are a couple of forms in there that always or that almost always have pretonic reduction. So we'll see it there. But uh, in general, this is a little harder to predict than this one. Okay. Zijn hier nog vragen over? Uh, was, was, het, was het redelijk duidelijk, hè? Mm -hmm. We zaten er wel helemaal naast, hè? Ja, leuk, hè? <laughs> maar dat geeft niet. Maar Noortje had het geweten, denk ik. Die is er niet. Weet, Noortje is er niet, nee, die doet niet mee. Oh, die kijkt naar Japan. Oh. Ah, is een nieuwe ja. serie weer? Nee, Michiel en uh, Roos zijn er. Dus, uh. dus wat, wat ik wel interessant vond, was wat hij hierover vertelde. Dat je dus um, een werkwoord hebt, was het volgens mij. En als je daar dan een, een mem of een taf hè, voor zet dat je dan het zelfstandig naamwoord krijgt en dat het eigenlijk gaat om deze kern. Ja, dus dit is eigenlijk de bench of three. Dat zijn de drie hoofdletters waar je altijd een woord op kan terugvinden in dictionaries. Oké, okay. goed. Die uit. New share. Les 2. Segalot. Van de klinker Segol. Segalot nouns. Segalot nouns are a special form of noun in Hebrew. And in this module we'll look at what happens when you add, we'll look at what they are, and what happens when you add the plural endings. First of all, what are they? The definition of a segulate noun is that there's a stress on the first syllable. And let us, what I'm going to do here, and I'll do this as I move forward in other modules too, these represent root letters. So we 
could be whatever they are, and stress on the first syllable. So there we are. Two, the second uh, definition of segulate nouns is that they have segol in one or both root letters. So if we have our stress there, it's either both of them or just one. It tends to be the second one, if it's just one. Maybe always. I can't think of a segulate that would have segol here and not here. The third one is really just an application. If, if they have gutturals, then they will tend to have uh, patach. So again, stress in the first one with patach here and here. Okay, let us look at some examples. Before I do that, correct that. There's my paintbrush. So, segulate nouns, stress on the first syllable, they have segols in one or both syllables, so one and two, or just two, and if they have gutturals, then they'll have patach. Let's look at some examples. Edits is an example. This is, I think, my favorite example word. Edits, at least based on frequency of usage, and the stress is here. Edits, so stress, two segols. That's a segolet. Melech. Me Melech means king. Stress on the first one, two segols. Definitely a segolet. What about Sefer? I think we've seen Sefer. Stress on the first syllable and a segol on the second. So that that's fine. That's a segolet noun. How about Kodesh? Kodesh. And again, we have stress in the first syllable, and we have a segol here. Now here we have a holum. That's okay, and here we have a tzede. As long as we have a segol over here in the second position. So, earth, king, book, holy, or holiness, and what happens with na'ar, which means young lad, here we have a guttural. Na'ar is spelt with two patachs and stress in the first syllable. So it also is a segolet. Na'ar. The reason those are there because of that, that uh, guttural. Now, there are many different types. Let me just go back one second. So we have all these different types of segolets. Different vowels here in the beginning, for many of them. But, fortunately, when you add the endings, the plural endings, male, male or female, they all go to the same form. And the form is this. Let me actually rewrite my little root letter symbols here. So, eh and a, eh, or we could have, as we saw, let's say that was a holum. We got stress in the first syllable all the way down, so just keep that there. Holum, we saw one like that. Kodesh, we saw one that went uh, Sefer, had a tzere there. Na'ar had two, two patachs. What happens when you go to the plural? You add the ending, and let me write my three root letters, or root letter placeholders again. <coughs> what happens is the first vowel goes to a shiva, local shiva, and this goes to a kametz. And your ending goes on here, either im or ot, right? And I'll do a circle for the ending. So regardless of what you start with, any of these, you end up with the same thing. Im ot. So that's nice. Let's look at some examples of the ones we just did, or at least some of them. So melech becomes 
my la melachim e e melachim and sefer becomes se fa rim melachim sefarim plurals are the same. The vowel reduction, the vowel changes. I don't know if you want to call it reduction, but the vowel changes that occur as you add the endings are the same, regardless of what you started with. Na'ar, which is very different, really, to pataks, uh, becomes ne a rim. So even the one with the guttural went the same thing, ne arim. Edits, remember edits? As these root letters. Now I'm going to not use the final form because I'm going to put an ending on. Let's put the ending on here. Uh, actually, edits is feminine. Be careful. Now, the only difference here is that this can't take a vocal, a simple vocal shiva, and so has to take compound shiva. We've grown to expect that. So, aratzot, edits becomes aratzot. But that's the only difference. The only difference is that because this can't take a simple shiva, it takes a compound shiva. Other than that, it's holding to the same pattern. They're all the same. Now, this looks like propitonic reduction, doesn't it? Propitonic reduction, we had, if you remember, if you have a comets or a tsere in the propitonic position, that's two back from the from the tonic syllable, so in this position, then they would reduce to a shava, unless you had a guttural, in which case it would be a patak shava, or a hataf patak, or some sort of compound shava. So this looks similar. This looks like the result of propitonic reduction, but in fact it's not. Um, okay. There's actually a lot more going on behind segalith nouns. We'll look at a little bit more of this later in the later module. I don't really want to get into all that right now, but understand for the moment that we have a special class of nouns called segolets. Stress on the first syllable, segol in one or both syllables, unless you have gutturals, in which case you have uh, patach, and they can produce, you can have different types because you have these different initial vowels, but they all take they all reduce themselves, they all come down to the same sequence of vowels when you add the endings, either feminine, like ot, or masculine. So just know that for now. Know what they are and know that the, the plurals are simple, all the same form. Okay. And he vraag over? Even kijken hoor, niet zocht een woord. Ja. Dit woord, waar staat? Melleggen. Maar als je hetzelfde woord neemt, dezelfde drie basisletters, en je doet daar. Ik geloof dat het malach is. Wat krijg je dan? Dit is koning. Wat is malach in het Hebreeuws? Is dat niet regeren? Even kijken hoor. Ik zoek het even op. Voor de duidelijkheid. Als het goed is, staat het erin. Ah. Dat is interessant. Je spreekt het hetzelfde uit. Uh, maar je schrijft het iets anders. Ik zal het even... Dit zou ik verwachten... Wacht even, ik moet hem even uitzeven. Zo. Die en dan die.
And I can hear. Malach. Komt daar dus een ding te staan. Dat betekent engel. En dan hebben we er nog één. En volgens mij schrijf je die wel zo. Molog. Molech. Dus je hebt drie woorden die vrijwel gelijk zijn. En dat is, de, dat is een godheid, hè? Ja. De molech is een godheid. Dus je hebt melech, malach en molech. En die gebruiken bijna allemaal dezelfde drie basisletters. De mem, de lamet en de get. Ik heb er nog geen antwoord op wat de overeenkomsten zijn, maar ik vind, vind het wel altijd spannend. Nou, we kunnen nog één doen, denk ik. Ja. Malach. Malach is ook regeren. Oké, okay. Malach is ook regeren. To govern, even kijken. Even zien hoor. Govern, staat dat hierbij? To govern. Ja. Nou, daar staat. Marshall staat hier als een ander woord. Maar goed, dat, uh, daar ben ik nog niet zo goed thuis in. Ik heb hier het Nederlandse woordenboek. Regeren, koning zijn, koning worden, koningschap aanvaarden. Het staat ook op bladzijde 493 van ons Animated Hebrew Boek. Ben je al zo ver, Ankie? Nee, maar er staat toch die woordenlijst, dus zoek je toch even in. Ja, dat weet ik, die 93. Kijk, en in deze kan ik het vinden. Woordenboek. Mm. Malach. Become king, rule, nifal. Mal Malat. Slip away. Melech en Malach. To be king, to give counsel, to be made king. Malcha is queen. Ja. Ja. Ah, nog veel te leren. Leuk. Nu gaan we naar monosyllabic. Monosyllabic, weet je wat dat zijn? Dat zijn woorden met één lettergreep, hè? Ja. Okay. Common monosyllabic words. In this module, we'd like to look at what happens when you add suffixes to monosyllabic words, words with only one syllable. Previously, we looked at the whole issue in general, what happens when you add plurals, plural endings in particular, to nouns, and then specifically with segolets. Remember, segolets have all different types, but in the plural, they all take one form. Here we want to look at what happens with monosyllabics in particular. Seuss, which was the word we looked at, our base, our paradigm word, actually is a monosyllabic. We didn't discuss it in that sense there, but it is. And if you add the feminine ending, you get a, uh, remember? Seuss, Susa go over here and write this, and the plural, sus, im, susim, and susot. We won't worry about the dual at this point. So here, we noticed that sus retained itself. Nothing changed. We didn't say why, or maybe I mentioned it. Anyway, the reason is because we have a mater here. This is a historically long vowel, and historically long vowels do not reduce. If you remember back to our vowel chart, we had, maybe I'll write it down here, we had our maters, we had he. At the very top row, we had the historically long vowels with the maters. He, we had yud, and we had vav. And then we had our long vowels, 
And then we had our short vowels, and then we had our composite or compound shavas down here. So it's out of four levels. Well, the top level, you can't reduce these, these historically long vowels. And if you want to think about it this way, it's, it's, like, it's like they have consonants in them. Of course, they don't. These are symbols used as consonants or as vowels. But you can't get rid of consonants. It's too heavy. It's too much to get rid of. So um, historically long vowels do not reduce. And so when you add these endings, even this feminine ending, it all stays. The basic form stays. Now, what happens with the next two cases of monosyllabics? That's what I want to look at now. If, so that's number one, historically long vowels do not change. Two, long vowels, so that was sort of tier two. You could call them changeable long vowels, I suppose. The long vowels that aren't historically long, don't have majors. Long vowels and short vowels, if they are in monosyllabics, then what you get is you get doubling. You get doubling of the second letter when you add the ending. Okay, what am I talking about? If you have a word like um, which is people, means people, and you add the ending, let us just do the consonants for a moment. Use the medial form of mame, obviously. And let's add our ending. So the ending would be im, that's no problem. Um, this stays, and you get doubling. The second letter doubles. And I think what's going on here is that you want to preserve your CVC. This here was a CVC syllable, right? C, V, C. And if you remember, let me just refresh you on syllables. We had two basic types, CV and CVC. And then we could have these both stressed. CV stressed and CVC stressed. But for the unstressed states, for the unstressed syllables, we could say something fairly concrete about the vowel that was in there. The longer one had to have the short vowel, and the shorter one had to have the long vowel. So, in this case here, we have CVC with a short vowel. No problem. Over here, we have CVC, CVC, because this has got uh, two consonants there, right? If we didn't double this, we'd have CV. Our silva would divide here, and we'd have CVC. But if we ended up with CV here, we would expect a long vowel. And in fact, we have a short vowel. So I think what's going on here is that the doubling, at least in part, at least one way to look at it, is that the doubling is here to preserve the CVC because you have a short vowel. Now, if we go back a screen, if we look here, here we had CVC. C, V, C with a long vowel, stressed because it's a monosyllabic. Here, when we add the ending, put our syllable division here, we get su, seem. So we have CV. What was CVC became CV. A closed syllable became open. But it's okay, because open syllables have to have long vowels, and in fact, you have a long vowel there. But if this vowel is short, as it is here, then you don't want an open syllable, you want to make it closed. And so I think that's what's going on. Now, having said all that, you can also get reduction here. You can have a long vowel, which you think would be okay, and it will reduce. So why? I, I don't know. Um, you'll get doubling, and it will, will reduce. An example of that is hook, which is statute, as in a legal statute. You pluralize it, and let's just do the consonants again. We'll put our ending on. What was a holon reduced to a shuruk, and you have doubling. Now, actually, what you end up then is CVC, right? CVC with a short vowel which is fine, which is good. But what may be happening here is that, in fact, I think that is what's happening. I'm just thinking aloud here. Um, your doubling happens first, or that takes priority. So if you double, you've made a CVC, and your long vowel can no longer exist in that, right? CVC, unstressed, has to be short, and so it reduces. So actually, this does make sense. It makes a lot of sense. 
And I think actually what is going on behind this here is that these are actually geminate nouns. Uh, we'll come to this later at some point. But the base form of this really, there's another meme here. And it's the singular that's really the odd one. Here this is, this is showing the base form in there, or at least historically. I could be wrong on that. But uh, in any case, this actually does all make sense, which is nice. CVC, because of the doubling, means you need to have a short a short vowel there. And in fact, a long vowel is then reduced. So, syllables really do play an important role in many things in Hebrew. Now, what's going to happen, we're going to go to our third case here, what's going to happen if this guy here is a guttural? Gutturals can't double, right? So it's a problem. So something else is going to happen. Well, if you have gutturals, the second letter is a guttural, so you can't double, which is what you would expect if you have a long, which is what you want here. If you have a long or a short vowel in your monosyllabic, but this is a guttural, it can't double. So what you get is compensatory lengthening or implied doubling. Now, if you go back, let me just write at least an abbreviation here, compensatory lengthening. Lengthening, oops, that should be ing, nope, e and ing. Compensatory lengthening, if you go back to the module on the article with weak letters, you'll remember that this was covered there, uh, or implied doubling. Implied doubling. So, the article, remember, has three parts to it. There's the, the consonant, the vowel, and then it wants to double the next letter. So if this was a, was a guttural, then it can't double, and there's a number of things that happen, including these two. Same thing here. You try to double a guttural, it doesn't work. Let's look at an example. Ra, which means evil. It's the adjective, evil. What happens is... And let me just write down the, uh, don't put this in for a second. So we can't double this, and, or let's start here. We've put on our, our masculine ending, im. It's a short vowel in a monosyllabic, so we expect to double this. We can't, and so this lengthens. Ra'im. And a similar one would be. Even a pause, want it will help a lot. What you just here have is opnieuw CV, CVC. The, that whole begrip van indelen van lettergrepen in open and gesloten met accent of zonder accent is cruciaal om dit soort regels te snappen. Wat je dus ziet is CV. Unstressed, want the, the clamptone ligt dus hier. Daar ligt het accent. Dat betekent dat dit CV unstressed is. En dat betekent dat die dus lang moet zijn. Waar die hier nog kort is, is die hier lang. En waarom kan die kort zijn? Omdat het een stressed syllable is. Een monosyllabic word, dat slechts uit één lettergreep bestaat. Heeft altijd een accent. Dus ook al kan je dus CV en CVC met een accent. Dat gaat dus hierom, om deze groep. Die kan zowel kort als lang zijn. Nou, dat zie je hier een beetje terug. Die, die, die ayin kan niet gedubbeld worden omdat het een guttural is. En komt die dus aan het begin van de volgende lettergreep te staan. Die staat hier. Dus vandaar dat deze kamets, dus dat deze pataf dus verandert in een kamets. Ik hoop dat dat helpt, deze uitleg. Ik wil eens even uitgeven. Als je dus dat, dat hele eerste, die eerste les die gaat over het begrijpen van lettergrepen en de accenten in lettergrepen. Dat komt dus blijkbaar elke keer komt dat weer terug. Die regel is dus heel, heel belangrijk 
voor het begrijpen van het, en dus de opbouw van een Hebreeuws woord. Goed, gaan we. Ach, which is brother. And this here is Ah Achim. This, I suppose, would be implied doubling. It is pretending to double, virtual doubling, whatever you want to call it. Uh, not doubling. This is not lengthening. In fact, it's reducing. I don't know why. Um, this is an, an odd, odd plural, but it doesn't double in any case. So you could call it implied doubling. And over here, um, we have compensatory lengthening because we can't double this, and so this lengthens to compensate. Ra'im. Now I suppose this produces a CV, right? Open syllable. Ra'im. It's unstressed and it's long. Well, um, I don't know. That seems counterintuitive to me, but it's what happens. It's probably could probably explain this in a more complete way, but this is what we're doing right now. So, monosyllabics, if they have historically long vowels, the vowel doesn't change. That's the first tier here. If they are long or short, changeably long or short, then you get doubling of the second letter, I think, to preserve the the closed syllable that you started with. Um, but anyway, whether that is or isn't true, what happens is with long or short monosyllabics, or long or short vowels in monosyllabics, you get doubling the second letter, and sometimes you get reduction as well if the vowel is long. And lastly, if you can't double, you'll get compensatory lengthening sometimes, other times it just won't double and you call it implied doubling. Okay. Uh, ik denk dat we een hoop geleerd hebben om uh, nu nog een nieuwe, nieuwe module te laten zien. Die duurt ook elf minuten. Dus uh, dat wordt een beetje veel, want het is best veel wat hij zegt allemaal. Um, dat is een ingewikkelde les, hè? Ja. Een ingewikkelde les, hè? Ja. Dus week beginnen we gewoon met het herhalen van de laatste module. Vind je dat een goed idee? Ja. Ik, uh, over die, met name die, die shagglet en die uh, monosyllabic words. Oké? Okay? Ja. Graag. Goed, nou, veel plezier. Ja, dankjewel. Heel veel zegen. Dankjewel, heer. Tot de volgende keer. Tot de volgende keer. Dag, dag. Doeg, doeg. doeg.